Get me security. Uh, Jim, there's someone for you at reception. Really? You might need to bring the eye taser with you. It's been a month and it's been a bit of a roller coaster with lots of ups and downs from the elation of getting it on launch day to the disappointment of Apple software announcements at WWDC. So we will cover today what's been like for me to use this iPad covering the processing power, the battery life, the design features, iPad OS, public beta version, the display, did it live up to the hype? The speaker, which really surprised me, and other bits and bobs. Not gonna lie, I was really angry when I realized that I essentially bought an overpriced tablet and not my next computer. My initial thought was, hmm, that was a mistake. But after one month of daily usage, working, watching content, studying, and having seen what's now possible with the new iPad OS 15, I don't know, was it really a mistake? This device may not be my next computer, but have I made the right decision? Let's crack on and find out. This video is not sponsored. It's from me to you. You're welcome. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech reviews. So yeah, I was pretty pissed about not getting any decent software upgrades or not even a cut down version of Final Cut Pro. I did a bit of a rant video about that, but that's on me. So be kind in the comments before you hit me and tell me that it's my fault that I bought a product based on a promise. Yeah, I know. I did buy a product based on its potential to one day become more than what it is now. Boasting one terabyte of internal storage and 16 gig RAM, yes, I was tricked into that one. This is the 12.9 inch version, which all in cost me just over $2,000. I appreciate that this is a lot of money to invest in any device. So hopefully this video is to help you in your purchasing decision. Or if you already got the iPad, this may highlight some areas that you haven't explored yet. What a powerhouse this is. What a machine, right? The question is, what do we need all this power for that we didn't already have on the previous iPads? And the answer is, right now, not much. Not for me. Yes, we are getting faster transfer speeds when using the Thunderbolt accessories. Experiences may vary. Yes, we are able to process more images more quickly using more layers in Procreate, for example, and edit videos, albeit basic editing, but we can render videos at blazing speeds using LumaFusion. For example, I did a comparison between the M1 iPad Pro and my overspec Intel MacBook Pro with 64GB of RAM, 2.4GHz Intel processor and the time it took me to render the same 10 minute 4K video was 19 minutes on the MacBook Pro against 5 minutes and 45 seconds to render it on the iPad Pro. Not comparing apples with apples here, but still, that speed is impressive. This is not an M1 MacBook Pro but it does cut through my 4K footage like butter. It just shows that when an app is optimized to take advantage of the M1 processor, this device can be amazing. I know many artists do use the iPad for things like animation, 3D modeling and photography, and I actually started to use the iPad Pro much more than my laptop for certain things, mainly because of the display and the mobility aspect. But when it comes to the heavier duty video editing, I still go to my MacBook Pro as I can really push the machine and not feel that my creativity is being limited. I wanted to add overlays like this one here for, for example in this video where I used After Effects and you just can't do that today on the iPad. Not as easily anyways. Is this me trying to use the iPad Pro as a computer instead of a tablet? Yeah, absolutely. After all, I have all I need from a hardware perspective. I have the amazing display, I have the connectivity to use external storage and displays, and I have the processing power here too. So why wouldn't I try to use it as a computer? I gotta be careful here not to turn this video into another rant, but yeah, call me old fashioned, but I do want to get more out of $2,000 investment. Back down to earth, in this one month that I have been using the M1 iPad Pro, what are the things that I actually like on this tablet? Let's talk about the great things that I think this tablet is able to do. I gotta be honest, the stuff that we're able to do with this device is very much the same that we could do with the previous iPad Pro. But there are some clear improvements. For example, everyone talks about the M1 in terms of its performance, but one aspect of the M1 chip is how the architecture is very energy efficient. In English, I still haven't encountered any issues with the overheating, for example, or got caught short running out of battery. It's been incredible, really. I take this to work when I, I'm in the office and I use it when I come home, for example, to watch content on it. I only charge it when I need it, of course, and the Magic Keyboard also helps because you can charge the iPad through it whilst you're working away. The short version of this entire segment, 
about six hours of screen on time and three hours to fully charge it. But if you're seriously considering buying this device and the battery is a consideration, you need more data. So here's the screen on time usage on a fairly busy day for me. I used about 90% of the battery on this day with just over five hours of screen on time. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I was downloading quite a lot of high quality content for a long time that day. And I've seen people trying to drain the battery and manage to do it in about six hours. The 11 inch iPad Pro will last about half an hour more because of course it has a smaller display. I had the display set at full brightness on this day with the Eros on right now. Yes, come on England, it's coming home. I've watched a couple of games whilst working away. Screen set to full brightness. It was also about an hour of browsing, half an hour of watching YouTube videos that day, 40 minutes of Apple TV, 15 minutes of just browsing Google Photos, half an hour of taking notes at work, and about 10 minutes of email, 20 minutes of writing, probably research for the video. I really don't like battery tests because they're usually quite unrealistic, but to give you another idea on a lighter usage situation, I fully charged the iPad yesterday and it took me almost three hours to get it down to 97%. And that's because I was using Evernote again and Notion, pretty much static, not downloading any data, and both apps support dark mode. So really the display wasn't doing much either. But yeah, and I don't ever close my apps right now. I've been purposely trying to push this device with lots of apps being open all the time. But again, the M1 chip is coming in clutch when it comes to power management. What about the software? Okay, credit where it's due guys. Not that Apple gives a damn about what I think, but I'm gonna share it anyway. The iPad OS 15 does improve the usability of the iPad. It makes this tablet much more efficient, for example, when multitasking. Multitasking? Multitasking. I'll say multitasking. <laughs> I found the experience much nicer now and given it's still in beta, they may improve it even further. I'm not a fan of multitasking. I actually prefer focused work, but in this sense, you can couple multiple apps to help you get a particular task done, which is focused work anyway. So even though this feature is called multitasking for me, this is actually helping me be more productive and more focused. Of course, that goes out the window if you pair a note taking app, for example, with a social media app or watching content, right? The point is you can do both. Maybe it's the weekend and you can take the foot off the gas a little bit and pair a note taking app with social media. That's fine. You have split view now and or center window so you can focus on something you know, like an email without leaving your current view. That's really cool. We also got this new shelf, which allows you to see all of the open windows that you've got for an app, and you can then add, close, or even switch between them. If you're using a keyboard with the iPad, holding the command key will actually give you more shortcuts for the app. And for all of you going back to studying soon and, you know, like taking notes at work, the other very cool feature that we've got is the quick note feature. I'm really happy with how quickly you can take notes now, it was already pretty good when the iPad was locked. There was you know, this neat feature that you can just start writing with the pencil to start a new or existing node. But this is nicer. A quick swipe from the bottom or using a shortcut, it lets you take a quick note without having to stop what you're doing. From a focused work and productivity point of view, this little feature makes a big difference for me. As I said, I'm not a big fan of multitasking. Humans are not designed to do that. You know, we function much better when we do focus. So for me, the least amount of distractions whilst working goes a long way in staying productive. Now, let's talk about this amazing display. Did it live up to the hype? Yes, for me, and by the way, there's no way I can show you here on YouTube how good this display is. There's so many things in between me and you. So if you're able to safely visit an Apple store, I definitely recommend you to do that. If not, you have to take my word for it. This thing is incredible. I've used some good displays. I have the Samsung S21 Ultra, for example, which has an awesome AMOLED display and I have an OLED TV, but Apple have done an amazing job here, guys. You may have heard about the blooming issue and I cover that in my initial review as well, but after a month of extensively using it, it's not a real issue for me. And it's not just the high contrast ratio and incredible color accuracy, but it's also how it feels to the touch. Maybe it's because the latest iPad I had was from 2015, but this feels great to the touch and I'm actually reluctant to use any screen protectors on it. I just killed about 15 sponsors, sorry. Talking about protection though, I can't really talk about it yet, but I will be reviewing an exciting product from a company that I absolutely love and I really can't wait to share more with you. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Actually, that's a good point. A lot of you are here for the first time. In the last 12 months, I produced about 100 videos covering a lot of gadgets, not just Apple. Some are rubbish, I'll give you that. But some are actually okay. So have a look around, and if you like my stuff, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed. 
and I'm a small channel as well, so share my video. I'm sure there's a WhatsApp group somewhere that will enjoy this. Anyway, the speaker. This one really surprised me. I love listening to music while I work, but I don't always like to wear my headphones, especially in the summer when it's a bit, you know, too hot. It's quite nice to just have the iPad playing some tunes or my favorite series in the background. Don't take my word for it. One of my viewers who is a teacher actually commented here in my previous video and said that he no longer needs to have a Bluetooth speaker uh, for his classes. The speakers on the iPad are so good that, you know, he just plays the content from it to the entire classroom. And that speaks volumes. There are many other things that I like about this iPad Pro and a couple of things that wouldn't be fair for me to comment on in detail because I really haven't used it in anger yet. Like the camera, for example. Yes, the new FaceTime is great, how you can now share a link with anyone and they can join from a non-Apple device. That's really cool and really quite easy to do. It's beginning of July now, so it's still in beta, but it looks pretty cool. That's wonderful, but what about the stuff that I don't like? In this one month of usage, the biometrics. I really think Apple should have given us something better than just Face ID. Yes, you can unlock it quite easily, but when I go into the office these days, like many of you, I still have to wear a mask. Not only that, if you're holding the iPad like a tablet, the camera is in the way. Turns out guys, you heard it here first, Apple had a secret meeting about this. Hey Jim, any updates on the biometrics for the iPad Pro? How are we doing? Yes, sir. We found that you can reuse the technology we used on the iPad Air to give our customers the choice between Face ID and Touch ID. So what do you mean? The power button is also a Touch ID button? Yeah, just like we did a few months ago. It's no bother. We have it ready. China, they're, they're on it. They're, they're building as we speak. But that's gonna cost more, right? Nothing really. It's like $2.78 per device. You're charging customers two grand, so profit is like a bucket load, give or take. And you're saying this is gonna hit my bonus? I, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer that, sir, but I guess, yeah. Give me security. Uh, Jim, there's someone for you at reception. Really? I don't have any friends. My family lives in Venezuela. You might need to bring the eye taser with you. Sir, but we look alike and everything. Sir, sir, don't. And just like that, guys, Touch ID was removed from the iPad Pro. When it comes to accessories, I gotta say, I was really looking forward to the Magic Keyboard, probably more so than the iPad itself. It is expensive, but what I really loved about it, especially because it's the 12.9 version, is that the size of the keyboard itself is very close to the keyboard on my MacBook Pro. That made it really easy for me to get used to it, but for me, it's not the best accessory to have if you just wanna lounge and watch content on the iPad. I know it's okay if you're sat at a desk or a table, but not great on the couch. That's what she said. But I love the trackpad, it's very responsive and accelerates very different, I think, to many other trackpads on the market. And I think it's to compensate for the size. It's very smooth, very nice to use. And yes, I'm still talking about the Magic Keyboard. The USB-C charging port is quite nice too. It's just power, of course, but it's very convenient. And the pencil is great. You know, the way it responds to pressure is really cool. And I don't really have one of those screen protectors, so it is a bit slidey, I have to say. Palm rejection works really well though, especially in apps like uh, Procreate or Notability. I don't do a lot of drawing, but I do take a lot of notes. And if I'm at home, I use this little glove, which makes it easier to write for me. Would I sell my MacBook Pro and only use my M1 iPad Pro as my next computer? No, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that this iPad Pro can do everything a MacBook Pro can. I'm not that naive. I honestly think that Apple are just afraid or even know it for certain that some people that are buying this iPad Pro would not need to buy another Apple computer. So they consciously decided not to make the iPad Pro too pro. For instance, you still can't really use an external display with it. Technically you can, but it's not the best experience. There are limitations with Thunderbolt still, and the latest iPad OS 15, from what I can tell, using the latest beta version, doesn't really take the iPad Pro to the potential I think it has. It's a shame that there are many apps in the pro category out there from my usage, but you know, what about you? Is this your next computer or is it simply your next very powerful tablet? I will see you and your smiling faces on the next one. Don't get for the phones, got her own way. Don't get for the scenes, take her own trip. Guarantee for a bag and she walk in. She get to the cash when she walks. She look like a bag when she walks. She get to the cash when she walks. She look like a bag when she walks.